I'm Charlie Bright of Gold Derby, and today I am speaking with Jared and Jerusha Hess, the Oscar-nominated filmmakers behind the nominated animated short 95 Senses. Uh, the first thing I have to ask you is, um, uh, 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 I saw that this was written by uh, Chris Bowman and Hubble Palmer. Uh, did you develop this with them, or did they, or did they come with you after they had sort of come up with the idea for this short? Yeah, the, the whole project kind of came together all at once. This was definitely um, uh, a collaboration from the get-go. The uh, in, in Salt Lake City, there's something called the Salt Lake Film Society, which are the art house cinemas in town. And Tori Baker and Miles Romney um, started like a, a mentorship program, a, a nonprofit called Mass, where we took up and coming filmmakers, uh, film students, and wanted to have them collaborate with people in the industry and develop a project. And this started, gosh, right in the middle of the pandemic. And Jerusha and I were thrilled to be a part of it. We're, we've always really wanted to, to help in any way we can. Um, young amateur filmmakers kind of find their way into the industry and and um that's how it all began and and we'd collaborated with chris bowman and hubble palmer before and um brought them into the project and yeah yeah i think i think knowing that chris and hubble were going to write this we felt really secure that this was going to be something special because they are brilliant writers and um it, it just it's all a little love fest from the beginning yeah um uh, so where did the idea uh, come from to have different artists animate each senses section of the of the film? So it was kind of the impetus of this project of, of you know, we wanted to get five to six animators and, and the producers to be involved. And so Chris and Hubble said, let's write a story that can feature each one really succinctly. And that's how they came up with the five senses as the vehicle to tell this um, character Koi's story. So each, it, it was just all kind of happenstance, right? They're like, how do we, how do we show each person and give them a little chapter and that was that was the way so they, they kind of develop they did kind of develop the, the plot like around that idea yep exactly yes. yeah 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 and so there was actually like a um like a film festival competition and we got submissions from around the world and from those different animations we picked you know the animators that we thought were best that would be able to really contribute to the short and so from there we kind of cast each animator for which sense you know which sequence in the film um that we thought they would be best suited for and couldn't have been more happy i mean it was yeah i mean some of the animation it was it feels so handmade you know even though some of it's done digitally you know some of it was done actually you know uh the main character interviews with koi um, were done by this guy, Daniel Brusson, who hand-painted watercolors on paper and then photographed them. And and you just don't see animation like that very often, um, but it's very tactile and just worked beautifully for the film. You mentioned um, how um, you, 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 you know, uh, uh, how you were choosing uh, which animators would animate which sections. What, what sort of uh, specific things helped you uh, to determine, you know, this person should animate smell, this should, uh, this person should animate touch. What helped you decide that? Yeah, for example, in the um, smell category, that was, that was animated by this little team who were still in a uh, university in Salt in Utah somewhere. And they had some, they had a, this other project, and I don't remember the name, but it was really slick, really feels like a Disney short. Like they have that kind of C classical classic. cell animation yes they yeah. have that classical feel and that and that sense one is really whimsical and charming it's like takes you back in this funny little thing and so we thought their their style would perfectly fit it and then in the end they pack such a gut punch when he gets hit by the uh, reader's digest so yeah it was things like that like oh i see this in this person and it would be good for this very emotional scene um i don't know yeah, yeah, but everybody had such a distinct style, and um, 
it just you just kind of go with your gut about you know what what is the best style to bring this part of this guy's story in life to the screen was there any uh sense uh with uh that it was tough that you found it was tough to uh uh nail down the right tone for with the with uh with the animators you know what one of the coolest things that happened is when we went out and recorded tim blake nelson who voices the main character like he i mean we're just such huge fans of tim and his voice was so authentic and so emotional and when we cut that together when we cut his audio track together that that's really what set the tone for everybody and that's what really anchored the whole film and so when we had all of those narrated pieces that we were able to share with the animators they really took their cues from his performance and really built the visuals around that and so the the tone was really set by him uh, which was was great and, and you know they had ideas from from the script pages but then when they heard it brought to life by him um it changed everything um actually that actually uh uh uh, piggy segues into uh, my next question, which is, uh, how did Tim Blake Nelson end up getting cast as uh, Coy, the film's narrator? He was always the muse for everyone, for everyone involved. They, we wanted him. Um, he's he's originally from Oklahoma. He did that perfect Texas drawl so well. He, um, you know, his performance is so. Um, it, it just, it feels like water, right? His little lilt that goes up and down and it's slow and it's, uh, I, I don't know, I'm just amazed that after you watch this 13 minute film, you're like, I just sat still mesmerized and there was no cuts and there was nothing. And I just, I was sung to by Tim essentially. Um, I don't know, he's he, so great. Yeah, yeah, he's amazing. We we had, we'd never worked with him. We had been fans of his since, <laughs> I mean, for me, since the movie Heavyweights, which I love, um, he's in it for like two seconds, but I love that movie. Um, and then all of his work with the Coen brothers and, and beyond. Uh, so I just just adore him. And we had sent him the script, told him that, hey, this is something we're doing with this nonprofit. Um, we'd love for you to participate. And he fell in love with the script. He was excited to work with us and the whole team. So it just came together in a very beautiful way. And uh, he just, he's been so generous with his time and, and um, yeah, he's, he's unbelievable. It was also, you know, the pandemic. And I think everyone who jumped on board felt something really akin to this tale of um, dying and what was life, right? I think there was something very special about the moment and, and the material. And uh, I mean, you mentioned, you know, he's from Oklahoma, but I, I, whenever I see him actually speak, and he doesn't have like a natural Southern drawl to him. It's always so jarring. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you just expect him. Yeah, he's, he's he lives in New York. York. He's been in New York for a while. Yeah, you expect Delmer from Oh Brother Where Art Thou? Totally, totally. Yeah. Um. Uh, so, um, as I said, uh, you know, this uh, uh, last week got nominated uh, for the Oscar for Best Animated Short Film. Congratulations on that. Uh, what Thank was you. it like finding out that uh, your that your short uh, was nominated for an Oscar? <laughs> I was watching. Jared was asleep because it was like three a.m. or two a.m. in New Zealand, and I was watching at home and with with our whole team on a on a Zoom, and I was just sweating like crazy. <laughs> you know, I didn't expect ever to get here with this. No one ever expects anything, right? In this industry, I don't know. Maybe they do. But I wasn't expecting it. And once we got to this spot, it was really nerve nerve wracking. And of course, I just start crying immediately. I think the whole team is screaming and crying. And it feels unreal. It feels really unreal. It was the same week that Sundance was doing the 20 year anniversary of Napoleon Dynamite. So it just felt like this weird look. Look where we've come. It's such a joy and a gift to be able to make movies that people respond to. Right. I agree. I was dead. I was dead asleep. She called me. Yeah. Like 2 45 AM <laughs> in Auckland. And I, yeah, it was, it was just magical, totally magical. And again, you don't plan for this kind of thing to ever happen. You just, you know, I think, um, 
it's yeah it, when thing yeah when things come together and a project comes together when it's a labor of love and and more people are going to get the chance to see it it's it's just a beautiful thing and I, it's funny you talk about the 20, I remember 20 years ago going to the theater to see Napoleon Dynamite. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> Never forget that. Um, <laughs> that's awesome. Um, so um, had you worked in, anim had you worked in animation before this? Uh, and um, if not, uh, do you, do you see yourselves continue uh, doing future projects in, uh, in animation? Yeah, so we, uh, weirdly enough, in 2020, we started work on our first animated feature for Netflix called Film of the Unicorn, and it comes out um, May 17th of this year. So we had already, gosh, spent a year <clears throat> working in animation with storyboard artists and, and, and everything as we jumped into uh, the short. So we had a little bit of experience under our belt by the time We'd started 95 Senses, um, and but we love animation. I mean, it feels like home to us, and we are so thrilled to be able to continue creating in that space. Do you have a personal piece, a uh, personal favorite piece of animation uh, that uh, that kind of sat in the back of your head saying, I, I, I hope we can work in this someday? Oh, boy. I mean, I feel like animation growing up was my favorite thing ever um disney's robin hood is probably a, a top five for me what yeah we just you? we just grow up you know with those disney classics and and little mermaid and aladdin were on repeat in my house <laughs> non-stop and it's uh saturday morning cartoons it's just it was the language language we all spoke right for so long and i i worry that kids today jump from little you know they jump from youtube um coco melon straight to tiktok and they miss <laughs> that transition period of sitting all day on saturday and watching everything right yep so i um we love it we really do love it and I, and we think that our 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 live action films feel very animated you know jack black is an animation <laughs> <laughs> that, that's very true <laughs> So we've been writing in this. We've we've written several animated scripts before. Um, we just love, we just love the limitlessness. Yeah, it's great. Well, uh, Jared and Jerusha, uh, thank you so much for joining us, and we wish you all the best over the next couple of weeks. And to all of our viewers, please like, share, subscribe, and keep going to Gold Derby to update your Oscar predictions in anticipation of the ninety sixth Oscars on March tenth. Thank you so much. Thank you, Charlie. Charlie. Thank you, man. Thank you.